Today we're going to learn how to solve equilibrium problems using the Rice Method. Here is the procedure and we will go through um, the problems together. Problem number one, we have H2 gas plus CO2 gas that's in equilibrium with water vapor and carbon monoxide gas. And the K value for this is 1.5. So the first thing that I'm going to do is write the balanced equation. It says in the directions, it's already balanced, so we've got that done. Now I'm going to write the equilibrium expression, and that would be K is equal to the products over the reactants raised to their coefficients. Everything has a coefficient of one. Chemists never write the number one, so the equilibrium expression Uh, the next step in our directions uh, says to list the initial concentration. So the initial concentrations have to be determined since we're given moles and a volume and concentration for our equilibrium problems must be in molarity. So the concentration of H2 is equal to 5 moles uh, divided by 1 milliliter is 5.0 molar. And the concentration of CO2 is also 5 moles in 1 liter, which is 5 molar. Uh, we have, initially, we have no um, react, uh, products at all. So that tells us what's going to happen um, for equilibrium to shift. In order for this to shift, it has to move to the right towards equilibrium. So uh, now we will set up our rice table. And we do it in this fashion. I'm going to rewrite it because it's easier for us to see. I'm going to leave out the states of matter. So here is the R, the reaction part of um, our rice table. Next comes the initial concentrations. One more time, it must be in molarity. We have five molar of both reactants. We have no products. Now we have C, which is the change in concentration that will lead us to equilibrium. As we've said before, it needs to shift to the right in order for equilibrium to occur. So that means, according to the stoichiometry of this reaction, sum of H2 will be used up, since it's a one-to-one to one-to-one -one stoichiometry, and the same amount of CO2 will be used up when the H2 is used up. And that will form um, water vapor and carbon monoxide. Here is a clue for you. You take whatever the coefficient is in front of the balanced equation, and that goes in front of your x. That will keep you um, straight and figured, and you will be able to easily figure out how things change. That portion right there is the stoichiometry step. Now we're going to write an equilibrium equation. We know that we started out with 5 molar, and some of it will be used up. When we find out how much is used up, we can find the equilibrium concentration. Likewise, we started with 5 molar. We're going to use some of it up. And when we take 5 minus some of what is um, used up, it will give us the equilibrium concentration. Our values for H2O and CO are X. That would be the amount formed with these two reactants. Okay, now we're ready to use this information in our law of mass action. We have determined the equilibrium concentration is equal to the concentration of water, which we have decided is X times the concentration of the carbon monoxide, also X, divided by, at equilibrium, the amount we started with minus some bit for H2 and the amount we started with minus some bit for the CO2. 
Now I'm going to do just a bit of algebra here. 1.5 is equal to x squared over the quantity 5.0 minus x also squared. I'm trying to solve for x so I can find out how much of this was used up to produce this amount. The first thing I'm going to do is take the square root of the whole thing, and that will give me 1.22 is equal to x over 5.0 minus x. Now I'm going to distribute this, 1.22 times 5 is 6.12, 1.22 minus x. 1x is minus 1.22x, and that is equal to x. 6.12 is equal to 2.22x. No, there's a 1 not written there. So x is equal to 2.76. What that means is 2.76 was used up to form this. So let's pop in the values to our equilibrium equation that we made. We started out with 5 molar. We used up 2.76 molar. That leaves us with 2.24 molar H2 remaining at equilibrium. Likewise, CO2, we started with 5 molar. We used up 2.76 molar, leaving us with 2.24 molar. When those reacted, they formed X amount of H2O vapor, which is 2.76 molar, and the same amount of carbon monoxide gas, 2.76 molar. So at equilibrium, the concentration of all species, let's recall species just means the things in the reaction, are right here. This is the answer to our Let's look at num uh, problem number two. Cancel that. Right, Lexan is a plastic used to make um, compact <laughs> combat discs, eyeglass lenses, and bulletproof glass. One of the compounds used to make Lexan is phosgene, an extremely poisonous gas. Phosgene will be in equilibrium with carbon monoxide um, gas and chlorine gas, and it has a Kp of 7.2 times 10 to the negative 11. That means at equilibrium, there's a lot more of this than there is of that. In pure phosgene, at an initial pressure of one atmosphere, decomposers calculate the equilibrium pressures of all species. Let's start with the equilibrium expression. There is Kp is equal to the pressure of the products, each of which have coefficients of 1, therefore exponents of 1, times the pressure of the reactants. One more time, we have um, uh, Q is at, this needs to shift to the right to get to equilibrium. So Q is less than K. So we know which way this is going to run. So we have this. We're going, we start out with our initial concentration of one atmosphere of COCl2, no carbon monoxide, no chlorine gas. The change that must be made to get to equilibrium is some of this must decompose, and when it does decompose, by stoichiometry, it makes the same amount of um, both of the products. So our equilibrium expression is one atmosphere minus x, x, and x. We can put this into our law of mass action. 7.2 times 10 to the negative 11 is equal to x times x over 1.0 minus x. 
Now I want to remind you that these are the equations that will give us the equilibrium pressures. This x is insignificant, and I will show you why. Let's say there is a poor man and a rich man. The poor man has $5 to his name. The rich man has considerably more than $5 to his name. Let's say that the poor man needs to spend $1, and so does the rich man. The poor man really feels that loss of $1, while the rich man really doesn't care. In fact, if I were to subtract that, it would get lost in the significant figures of this number, and it makes no difference at all to the rich man. What does this story have to do with this x? Because equilibrium lies so far to the left, the amount of x that re the amount of CoCl2 that reacts compared to the one atmosphere is insignificant. It is like taking a dollar away from the rich man. You won't notice when you take x away from the beginning one atm. Therefore, in the math portion of this problem, you have my permission and AP's permission to absolutely ignore this value. Can you ignore it here, here, or here? No, just in the math portion. So when we resolve this, 7.2 times 10 to the negative 11th is equal to x squared. x is equal to a very small number, 8.48 times 10 to the negative 6. That means that our equilibrium pressure of COCl2 is equal to the original 1 atm that we have, minus 8.48 times 10 to the negative 6 atms, and that will leave us with 0.9999, I think one more 9, 1 atm, which when we factor in our um, significant figures, that's 1 atm. The equilibrium pressure of CO and the equilibrium pressure of Cl2 are both the value of x, 4.8 times 10 to the negative 6 atm. Okay, now, how do you know when you're allowed to drop this x? My rule of thumb is any k value that is smaller than whatever the coefficient is times 10 to the negative 5th is um, okay to drop. Make sure you just drop that x where you're supposed to be. Problem number three. This is the first time that we have a coefficient in our problem other than one. This is not working for me very well today. Um, problem number three says K for the decomposition of nitrogen monoxide is 2.5 times 10 to the negative fifth at 1700 K. Here is the balanced equation, and they tell us how much is placed into a flask and heated. So it looks like the first thing we have to do is write the equilibrium expression. K is equal to 2.5 times 10 to the negative fifth. And then we take the products and divide them by the reactants, raising them to their coefficient. The coefficient of N2 is 1, the coefficient of O2 is 1, therefore we're raising it to the first power, but this time the coefficient of NO is raised to the second, it um, has a coefficient of 2, so we're raising NO to the second power. Now we have to figure out um, starting concentrations, they tell us we have 0.015 mole of 
the NO in a 12 liter flask. So we have a initial concentration of the NO of 0.00125 molar. We have no nitrogen and we have no oxygen to begin with. So Q is smaller than K, so this reaction must shift to the right in order to reach equilibrium. So here is our equation for our rice table. Our initial concentration is 0.00125 molar of NO, no N2, no O2. The change, since this must shift to the right to get to equilibrium, this will get smaller by a value of two times as fast as this gets larger. I took the coefficient and put it in front of the x to keep us straight with our stoichiometry for this problem. Our equilibrium equation, 0,0,1,2,5, our starting amount of NO, will be decreased by 2x to form x amount of N and x amount of O2. So let's put some numbers into our law of mass action, noting that our k value falls into the range for us to ignore one value, and that is this value in the math portion of our problem. And this quantity will be squared. This is the part for um, expediency sake that we are allowed to um, disregard. I'm going to multiply, I'm going to square this and then multiply it by that. And when I do that, I get 3.91 times 10 to the negative 11 is equal to x squared. X is equal to 6.25 times 10 to the negative 6. And now that allows me to figure out the equilibrium concentrations of all of my reactants and products. So N2 started out at 0, 0, 1, 2, 5 molar. And from that, I'm going to subtract 2 times the value of X. that will give me a ending amount for the equilibrium amount of NO to be 0 0.00124 molar. N2 is equal to X, which is 6.25 times 10 to the negative 6, and so is 14.